Praise the Lord. My dear friends, today the whole church celebrates the great feast of divine mercy. We are in a time where our hearts are shocked with the things that are happening in Sri Lanka where so many children, especially the children who have received First Communion, all of them are died in a cruel death. In this moment, we are celebrating the feast of divine mercy. Whenever the humanity goes through pain, we see the Lord, the compassionate God, crying for mankind. This compassion of God helps man who is destroyed by man to be rebuilt. Let not the hurts that we receive let not the pain we receive, let not the violence that we face shape our life. We look unto Him and we are filled with His compassion, His mercy, His consolation. Only His compassion can console us when we go through trials and tribulations. It is this compassion of God today we remember and we celebrate that we may become people of compassion to one another. We may be compassionate to ourselves and see us as God children. Learn to forgive ourselves and we be compassionate to one another. Seeing Jesus in one another. Trying to forgive and rebuild one another. We read in Psalm 86 Verse 15, it is written, But you, O Lord, are a merciful and gracious God, slow to anger, most loving and true. Yes, the Bible shows our Father as a compassionate God. In the book of Exodus, chapter 34, verse 6, we read God revealing himself to Moses, saying, I am God of compassion. We see our Father, the Lord, a great compassionate God. We read in the book of Genesis chapter 3 verse 7, when man sinned against God and he was hiding in the trees, God came and said, my son, where are you? The heart of God began to cry for man. We read in the book of Exodus, chapter 3, verse 7 onwards, God is calling to Moses, I hear the cry of my people. Whom will I, whom shall I send? Yes, when people are crying, people are in tears, our heart begins to cry because our God himself is a God of compassion. And he cries and weeps when people go through pain and suffering. And he wants to save them. That's why he sent the prophets. That's why he sent the kings. That's why he sends the priests. He sent all kinds of people to tell the world there is problem, but there is also hope in God. God looks at them. God cares for them. Yes, in the book of Genesis, chapter 16, verse 8, and a servant lady called Hagar, she was chased by her own mistress. The man who is, whose child she was carrying, Abraham, didn't bother her. She's a servant girl. She has no money. She has no address. And she didn't know what to do with her misery. She wanted to die. God called her. Hega, Hega, my daughter. Yes, God is always there for those who don't love anybody. We are in the world because He is with us. We have many problems. We can face all of them because He is with us. Because He is with us, we can face life. We will have a wonderful future because He cares for us. That's what 
he revealed as a father. We read in the book of Lamentation, chapter 3, verse 22 onwards. Today, in spite of all of our sin, we are not consumed. It's because of his compassion and love for us. I remember a few incidents when Samson, he was in the filth of sin. He was lying at the lap of a prostitute. And thousands of the enemies have come with the swords. He looked up. He saw himself a miserable situation. Because of his sin, he allowed himself to be tied up by the prostitute. And thousands of people are standing before him with swords to kill him. He looked up and said, Lord, have mercy. The compassion of God came upon him in the form of anointing. And he could save himself and destroy the enemies. I read in the book of Exodus, when Moses was disturbed by the elders, he said, I will prove that God is with me. He goes to God and says, there is no water and people are abusing me. God speaks, my son, go to the rock, speak to the rock, take the staff, my power is with you. Speak to the rock and the rock will give the water. In his agony, in his pain, in his humiliation by others, he could not hear the Lord properly. When our minds are disturbed, we can't hear properly what others tell us. And that's what happened to Moses. He took the staff. He only had a staff, rock, water. So he took. Come on, man, I will show. So all of them ran. Moses took the staff and hit the rock. Water did not come. Because that's what, that was what God told him. You speak to rock, he said. But Moses hit and so there was no water. The others might have laughed and made fun of Moses. Moses was angry. He took the stuff, again hit the rock. Though the Lord has not said to hit the rock, but God humbles himself in order to protect his servant, in order to honor his servant, and he brings the water from the rock. And then he tells Moses, My son, you have become old. You are getting very angry. God humbles himself and honors his servant. Though he has not said to hit the rock, when Moses does, God brings water. That is the compassion of God. Yes, our God is a compassionate God. That's what we read in the book of Nehemiah, chapter 9, verse 17. Where Nehemiah prays like that, Lord, our people have refused to obey and no longer remember the miracles you had worked for them. They stiffened their necks and turned their heads to return to their slavery in Egypt. But you are a God of pardons, gracious and compassionate, slow to anger and rich in mercy. You did not forsake them. Yes. That is the God of compassion. And we find the same God came in the person of Jesus. We read in Matthew chapter 1 verse 23. You will call him Jesus. Emmanuel, God is with us. God to be with us in our struggle, in our pain, in all our ways. And at the end, to carry away our sin, he will die on the cross shedding his blood. Jesus of Nazareth, he came to this earth as a symbol of compassion of the Father. He brought the compassion of the Father to the mankind that they could feel and experience. We read in Matthew chapter 9 verse 36, he said, I see my people, they are helpless, they are scattered, they are like sheep without the shepherd. Yes. And he had great compassion and stood the whole day, healed them, and his heart was broken. Yes, that's what we read when he met all kinds of people. We read in the Matthew's Gospel, chapter 14, verse 14, verse 15, verse 32, how he, with great compassion, 
he healed them he forgave them yes when he met the samaritan woman he said god is a gift for you when he said to me when he saw the tax collector matthew he said only the sick people need the doctor and i have come for you don't worry be courageous when he saw in luke's gospel chapter 19 a great rich man sakaius he said my son come i want to stay with you what a great god we read in map luke chapter 10 when he saw mary and martha they were broken he came to visit them john 11 when they lost their brother lazarus he went and cried for them yes jesus is the lord son of god who came to reveal to us how god is compassionate that's why we have beautiful chapter called john 10 jesus the good shepherd i have come to lead you i have come to guide you and i have come to give my life for you John 10:11 I have laid down my life John 10:17 I lay down to take you back to be with me yes I even on the cross that good shepherd that compassionate savior of the lord was revealed even on the cross he forgot about his pain and he gave life to the thief even on the cross he gave life to his mother yes He is a God of compassion, and then he said the disciples, "Go all over the world." He anointed his children to go and show the same compassion to one another. That's why we read in Romans chapter five, verse five, Second Corinthians chapter five, verse fourteen. Saint Paul, looking at Jesus, he became a compassionate man. He says. the love of god the compassionate of god is just crushing me it is consuming me making me a person of love yes he wants god the father compassionate god he revealed his compassion to his son and jesus makes you and me to be compassionate in the world because it is our compassionate heart makes us like christ how do we become like jesus by our compassion to one another there are nobody in the world who have not done mistakes in the gospel of today we find jesus came to the disciples they were frightened but he took their what they have done to him they did not stand with him he said it is not the time to mend the issues what they have done to me is not important what can i do for them the world is dying in sin i am not here why have you done to me but the world is in need of god's compassion what happens to me is not the matter jesus showed them that i am alive i am with you i will walk with you i was dead now i am alive my power of resurrection is with you and you too death may come but you will overcome live my victorious life but thomas was not that when people the disciple told thomas we met the lord the thomas said i won't believe but next time when thomas was inside jesus came called thomas and said my son come look at my hands this wounds are for you put your finger and my wounds may you be moved with my love put my put your hand on the side of mine and may your hand receive the healing power of mine jesus covers up his sins and he gives him his compassion thomas cried my lord and my god and he became a great apostle coming to india a place where thousands of gods are being portrayed and he became a great apostle of india he draw thousands of souls to the lord my dear friends that's what we read in today's first reading from the book of acts of the apostles the god of compassion in the gospel 
and in the second reading. Let's close our eyes and pray. God, Heavenly Father, you are a God of compassion and you revealed your compassion to our forefathers and to the people of Israel. Though they were adamant, though they were sinful, you never left them. You said in Hosea 11, 8, How will I give you up? How will I give you up, Ephraim? It is I who taught you. Yes, Lord. Today we are not consumed because of your compassion. Lord, your compassion, you revealed to us through your son, Jesus, who came as a good shepherd, who laid down his life for us. Thank you, Lord. With the same compassion, you have trained your apostles. You train all of us today. You said in 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 18, as you have reconciled the world to the Father, you are reconciling each one of us to you. That we too may work hard with compassion and love. We may walk in this earth with compassion, mercy, to draw all the souls to you. Lord, the world is dying. Especially our hearts are broken for the people of Sri Lanka, for the innocent people. Jesus, where extremism and pain is, you're trying to rule the world. The violence is trying to prove that it, is a, it has power. No, Lord, compassion and mercy has stronger power. Your compassion moved you to love us. May the same compassion live in us and move us that the world may be saved. Fill all the people, especially people who hurt others, people who are planning violence, people who try to bring terrorism, people who are trying to do all kinds of harm to one another. Jesus, have mercy on our nation. We pray, Lord, sprinkle your precious blood on the water that came from your side upon the whole world. May the whole world experience your compassion and live by you. Forgive us with your blood and fill us with your Holy Spirit. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen. Praise the Lord. Have a great day. May the compassion of Jesus be with you and make you compassionate to one another. Amen. My dear friends, Sangamon Plus TV is God's gift for you for our times. Like, comment, share and subscribe. God will do wonders in your life. Praise the Lord.